Hi, and welcome to another one of our videos about Parkrun. Today, we'll be talking about barcode scanning and number checking. Hi, welcome to the Mammoth Tech Show. I'm Jeff. I'm Frankie. And today, we'll be talking about Parkrun again. In the previous episode, we talked a little about the stopwatches, so today we'll be talking about the little barcode zappers. And we'll be talking about the barcode scanning roll and the number checking roll as well. Yeah. So, let's have a little look at these barcode scanners then, Frankie. Right, okay, so each park run, as far as the barcode scanners, will be set up slightly differently mm -hmm. you'll find that most park runs will use these little black barcode scanners mm -hmm. um some park runs now have switched over to using the smartphones because there is a virtual volunteer app which is an official All park right. run app that you can use to do the mm -hmm. scanning on your phone um so we're going to show you how both work today okay but most park runs will use these little black zappers here so how do these barcode zappers fit into Parkrun? Okay, so once you've finished Parkrun and mm -hmm. you've come victoriously over the finish line um, with a big smile on your face, because, yeah. you know, it's good, never good hard smile. work, um, you'll be given a results token yeah. and you've also got your own personal barcode, oh, which yeah, we've yeah. covered off in a previous yes. video. Yeah. So what you will then do is um, find out from one of the marshals, they should have covered it off in the van briefing, where the scanning is going to take place. Yeah. You take both your finish token and your personal barcode over to the scanners, and they will scan your personal barcode first, mm -hmm. then your finish token, um, and that is okay. it. So how does the barcode scanning actually work then? Okay, so as I was discussing before, there's a couple of ways that you can do it. And the first method that I'll show you is using the black zappers, because that's normally okay. how the most park runs will do it. We've got the little black barcode zapper here. We've got an athlete's barcode. And what you do is you just aim the zapper, which is basically like a shop barcode scanner, mm -hmm. at the barcode. You can see there's a red line. Wait until that scans, and the barcode will make that double beep sound. Yeah. So that's you then hand that barcode back to the athlete. That's mm -hmm. all we need to do. For the case of this video, I've got some replacement results oh, token yeah. stickers here um, because I haven't got any of the actual results tokens. Um, so then you basically just do exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm to the results. So in this case I'm going to scan number one because it will be the one and only time I come in in number one. So it makes that happy noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as long as both sets of barcodes make that nice happy noise, yeah. everything is fine. Um, so I've got one of my older barcodes here mm -hmm. um, which won't scan. Um, and there's various reasons why they won't scan. This one won't scan because I printed it out in draft quality for some oh, reason. Yeah. So you have to print it out in, in best quality. But it might um, have got wet or something. It like. might have got wet or sweaty or, right, you know, way, yeah. it's normally because it's been in someone's pocket when it's mm. been raining and it's got wet. Okay. Um, so as you can tell, I'm scanning it. But no, it's not beeping at all. Okay. So in that instance, you know it hasn't scanned. Okay. And that point is when you hand it over to the role of the number checker. It won't let you accidentally scan it twice because it just uh. makes that single beep noise. Can yeah. you hear that? Yeah. So if you've if it makes that noise, you know that you've already scanned the athlete's right. barcode. Okay. Um, so the cons of these little black beepers um, yeah. is you're relying on the beeps. Yes. And depending on where you're doing your scanning for your park run, it can be... Yeah, and if, uh, if somebody else is sitting next to you doing barcode zapping, was that your beep? Was that the other person's beep? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I can, I can see where confusion. You thought you beeped it, but it didn't beep. Yes. That might happen, yeah. Um, which is leads me on to why some park runs have moved on to using mm -hmm. the 
um, phone app. So Parkrun have their own official app, which is called Virtual Volunteer. It's available on both Android and iOS. Yeah. You just search your respective stores mm-hmm. for the for Virtual Volunteer, and it will come up. So this is what the Virtual Volunteer app will look like when you load it up. So you've got two boxes. So the top box, which is a green box, says time, Mm -hmm. which means you can use this app instead of the top watches for timekeeping. And we're we're going to be using the bottom box that says scan today. Mm -hmm. So it basically does exactly the same job as the zappers. You do it exactly the same way, except we're just going to use the phone to scan rather than the scanners. So we can tap Mm -hmm. on scan. And you can tell it's just using the smartphone camera. The other thing to bear in mind is, um, I've set this up a few minutes before we started filming, it will ask you to go into airplane mode. All right. um, Just to stop any other interference and anything else coming through. So it's always best to follow that advice, but I've already got mine in airplane mode anyway. So the difference with the app, as you can see, is you've got one column that says Parkrunner, and one column that says position. So you'll be able to see in a minute visually that it you can that it will show mm-hmm. yeah. both tokens. So I'm just going to scan the athlete token. So you basically hold it to the camera and you can tell that it's loaded up yeah. my athlete ID. Okay. Then you're going to get your results token and you're going to do the same thing. So, with the phone app, as you can tell, you've actually got the parkrunner ID and their position on the screen so that you can be confident that you've, you've scanned both bits of information and you can then reiterate that back to the parkrunner um, if they ask you. Oh, that's good. That's good, you got the confirmation there. Yes, yeah. yeah. That's the big advantage of the phone app mm. is that you can definitely see that it's scanned. Okay, so as we saw in the previous episode, uh, getting the information from the barcode onto the laptop yeah, um, yeah via the USB via cable, the how would you work it using the smartphone app? So using the smartphone app, so... Um, there's a button on the app that says export results Mm -hmm. so what you would do is you press that button and it will take you to wherever you want to share it you can then set it up into a gmail or any other email um, send it to your parkrun's email address Ah. and then the results processor will access the parkrun email pick it up save it to the same place that all the other files are saved and then you just select it in exactly the same way as you do when you're selecting the other files it will process it in exactly the same way and fit it into all the all the results so the smartphone just emails those numbers to whoever's doing the results processing yes as a csv file you don't have, I think. You don't have to give them you the results process of your smartphone or anything no, like that? No, no, no. So you are in control of your smartphone at all times. You just send it to your Parkrun's email account. So you need to make sure you send it to the right one. And um, then you have those details, yeah. And yeah. that you've got the, the correct details. And just then make sure you inform whoever's doing the results processing mm-hmm. that you've sent an email with, with your particular set of results so that they can be sure to pick them up. So what does the number checker do? Okay, so the role of the number checker um, can be a little bit confusing. Mm-hmm. Some people seem to think it's number checking at the finish line, mm-hmm. making sure that the stopwatches and the finish tokens are a matching number. Um, that isn't the official role of the number checker. The official no- role of the number checker is dealing with the barcodes that don't scan. Okay, so do they sort of sit next to the person doing the barcode scanning? Normally they're they're nearby. Mm -hmm. The number checker's role is to deal with the barcodes that won't scan for whatever reason. Um, So if you're using the black scanners, um, they just won't make a noise when you scan over the barcode. There's no beeps at all. Um, Okay. And on the smartphone app, it obviously just Nothing won't appear. Will come up, yeah. Nothing will come up. Okay. In that instance, you send the athlete off to the number checker. Um, and the number checker's role is 
quite literally to take the details down. You normally have a standard template form with you. Mm -hmm. um, if you haven't, it's not, it's not important, but all you need is their athlete number, their name and their position. Okay. And it's always a good idea to have the athlete number and the name so that whoever's inputting it manually into the yeah, results has got that, yeah. has got two bits of information that they yeah. can put in. Yeah. Um and that, that is the that is the barcode scanning and number checking role. Excellent. So uh, a lot of the park runs moving over to smartphones? Some of them I think have moved over to using a hundred percent smartphones. Oh, right. Um Obviously, there's the obvious cons to using smartphones in the winter. Um, not everyone's got waterproof smartphones. A lot of barcode scanning takes place outside, um, and they don't like glaring sunlight either, um, mm. which is why some park runs are relying on the little black scanners. Um, but, yes, so there's a mixture out there, but some park yeah. runs are 100% phones. Right. So is it possible if you're, for example, a fast runner and... You could do that after your run? Yes, so quite often it's a role that um, yeah, the faster runners will take on because they can get back in time. Oh, yeah. Um, so some park, yeah. So if you're finishing in about 20 odd, 22, 25 minutes, yeah. you can do your run, come back, do some barcode scanning, and there's your run, your run token and volunteer token right. for that week. Um, more often than not, you'll you'll just do it and not run but i do know quite a few people like to do both okay so that was the barcode scanning and the little look at the number checking, number checking as well hope that's helped i've been jeff i've been frankie this has been another look at parkrun on the mammoth tech show and you've been very kind to watch Thank you very much.